Does anybody else's dispatch straight out argue with them? Explaining after you explain to them that you're going to be late for this drop and this the next drop because you had to take a 34 because you ran out of hours and recap hours and they're sitting here arguing with you telling you you will make it on time even though there is no physical way for you to make it on time What's good, everybody? Lockout Man back with another reaction video. And today we're going to be reacting on three TikTok female trucker videos today. And one particular video is where a young lady is talking about the issues that she has with her dispatcher. Now, we had all the issues with the dispatchers. You're not the only one, and I don't think that you're going to be the last. What you got to do with your dispatcher is just simply this. You're the captain of your ship, all right? You're going to the captain. You're the navigator. You're the driver. You know when you can make it there and when you can't make it there. There's sometimes issues with you and and the dispatcher that that may butt heads that the dispatchers may see one thing, but you definitely there in the thick of it sees another. Now, if you can't get the load there on time, then, of course, you call your dispatcher up. You say, hey, I can't get this load there on time. Um, Is there a way that we can possibly you know get it uh, uh get a new appointment or can i get it there a little bit late or am i'm going to be worked in we're going to figure out together how we're going to do this okay now we shouldn't be button heads with each other we we should come together and and make things work make things easy Okay, life, traffic, accidents, all sorts of stuff happens. Does anybody else's dispatch straight out argue with them? Explaining, after you explain to them that you're going to be late for this drop and this, the next drop because you had to take a 34 because you ran out of hours and recap hours. And they're sitting here arguing with you, telling you you will make it on time, even though there is no physical way for you to make it on time. And now you have to explain to the drive manager why you are late and the next drop is late. <clears throat> and then they tell you, well, why didn't you request a repower? And you have to tell them I requested it twice. And the dispatch decided not to because it's weekend dispatch. And I'm sorry, I don't think they really give a shit. No, they unfortunately don't weekend dispatchers are only there for one purpose and it is not to dispatch your loads okay uh the weekend dispatchers is only there for to help you out in case of a breakdown in case of misunderstandings between you and the shipper and receiver um minor stuff like that but as far as as major stuff that stuff that major stuff that you and your day supervisor day dispatcher does, the weekend dispatchers don't. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. I respect dispatchers. I truly do because they get a lot of shit. But to the ones that just don't care and will sit there and say, "Oh no, you're fine. You're fine." When you have explained to them multiple times. No, I'm not. And this load is not going to be there on time. And they go on and on. You're fine, you're fine, you're fine. And then they're the first ones to come after you when the load is fucking late. Anybody else have to deal with that shit? Because that's what I'm dealing with right now. And I'm just Exactly. So this is trucking. This is part of trucking that you're going to have to get used to when you get up in the industry. You're going to have to deal with rude inconsiderate non-educated dispatchers they just dare just to dispatch the load because they don't know nothing else they're like college high school high school p 
people that's coming in and working behind the desk. They don't understand what goes on out there. They don't understand what we go through. Now, if the dispatcher is a truck driver that been through it all, then God damn it, that's the one I want. I want that dispatcher right there. At least he can he can understand what is going on when I explain to him certain situations. That's what you want. That's what you like. Is you going to get it? I don't think so. <laughs> but look, the best bet is is try to get a just try to get a rapport with your dispatcher. Now, I I honestly don't have no tips for the weekend dispatchers because if you work at a major carrier, it's going to they're going to flip on you. Regardless, you're going to get a different dispatcher every weekend, I guess. I don't know. Depending on if you were a small company and your dispatcher, the, your day dispatcher is your weekend dispatcher, then that's what you want to. That's what you want to. All right, guys, if you like this video, leave a like. I got another clip to share with you guys. So All right, here it goes. Promised, back to unpack. Um, there is an insane amount of men in my comments saying that I'm doing too much. I'm just paranoid. They've been doing this 20, 30, 40 years and they've never had to do all of this. Good for you. That's what being a man is like. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm not a, I'm not a kid. Congratulations. As a woman, we worry about men following us to and from our trucks. We worry about men sitting on our trucks waiting for us to get back. We worry about men trying to open the doors while we're sitting inside. I didn't start this process this way. I used to just lock the doors, close curtains, go to sleep. Boy, I tell you, man, oh man, oh man, I tell you, I don't get you guys, man. Truckers, truck drivers, come on, man. Leave these women alone, all right? If you like them, you like them. Stop being a creep towards them, all right? Stop being a creep towards them. If, you, if you're interested in a female, just, you know, just say, hey, how you doing? And if she don't give you no playback, then just keep it moving. Stop being a creep. Now, as she said, there are men that's, that, that made this process happen for her. She didn't make it. You know, everything was simple. Everything was cool with her. But now she's on another level with you guys because you guys put her there. But because of the things that I have seen and had happened to me, I've built this process and it will probably continue growing. Let's be honest. Um, I started doing the seatbelt thing because I was in Denver, Colorado at a truck stop and woke up to cop cars pulling into the parking lot because someone's truck was broken into while she was sleeping. It's not hard to open these doors. All you need is a stiff wire and a string with a slip knot on the end and you can <laughs> A slip knot and a string. <laughs> No, all you need is the, uh, well, I'm not even going to say it, you know, because a lot of you truck drivers that's in the know, that's already in the know with freight liners and internationals. So if you're already in the know, then you already know. I'm not even going to mention there, there are other ways to get into these trucks. And again, the company, instead of making the locking mechanism separate from every other truck that's available they made it they want to make it easy so that their mechanics or their or anybody you know anybody else that's working on the truck can unlock them from the outside it's not hard um so i started doing the seatbelt thing i actually started having my passenger seat constantly seat belted because i was sitting at a receiver getting unloaded on the phone and a guy opened my door i told him to close the door and get out and he climbed inside my truck because i forgot to lock it from having it open earlier that day reached for my taser first thing he did was back out that door stays seat belted now i have had people follow me to the truck stop from my truck and vice versa i have had notes taped to my truck from me walking inside come back out there's notes taped to my truck and they're not innocent notes they're very perverted 50 maybe 60 percent of the time sometimes they're just call me with a name and a number um i have been told not to leave my truck by the guy parked next to me because there was a guy sitting on my utility deck 
I have come out from the truck stop seeing a guy sitting on my utility deck and I sat outside the truck stop and waited for him to leave before I walked to my truck. I have had a guy spend the better part of an hour walking around my truck knocking after I told him to leave me alone. It's endless reasons to take these precautions as a female, as a 5'2", 22 year old female, I have these concerns because these things are happening, because men are creating this environment. And to the ones saying that I should find a better job if I feel so unsafe, I like this job. I wanted this job. I paid money to get my CDL for this job. I shouldn't have to get another job. I should be able to do the job that I want without worrying about what the next man is going to do if I ignore him. It's wrong. It's an issue. And if you don't see the issue, you're part of the issue. So truckers, man, leave these females alone. Now, there is some females out there that do want the attention. You know, some of it bad, some of it good. But other females that at least just coming out here just to do their work, stop making it hard for them. Okay? Stop making it hard for them. Of course, they go, if they come out looking all fine and all like that, just admire from a distance. I mean, if you if you the one that want to go up to her and be like, hey, how you doing? You know, you look good. Give her a compliment or something like that. But don't harass her. Don't sit on her truck. Don't leave notes. Don't do that. If you hand the note to the female, say, hey, here's my card. Hey. Here's my note. Why don't you give me a call sometimes? Hey, you know, whatever. Don't just leave them on their trucks. But ladies, let me just say this to you. There are creeps out here. There are creeps out here. You need to keep your head on the swivel. You need to keep something in your hand if you want to protect yourself. Okay? All right? Just take it from me. All right? If you don't want that kind of attention, then don't garner that kind of attention. All right, because you being a lady trucker is already bad enough that guys don't want you in this industry. They already have have feelings about you being in this industry. They already saying that you not supposed to be in this industry. But this is the millennial and y'all got bills just like everybody else. All right. All right. So just be careful. Take care of yourselves. All right. And guys. For the love of God, man, leave these females alone. I mean, if you want to talk to them, then be respectable, all right? Be respectable. Guys, you like this video, leave a like. I got another clip for you guys. Check it Safety out. Safety tip for women drivers. If you're on your sleeper and you hear somebody trying to break in, all you got to do is get up slowly and real quiet. Open your drawer. Aim and shoot them motherfuckers. Yes. That's all you got to do, lady truckers, is go out, buy you a gun. Now, here's some things that you need to know before purchasing a weapon. Number one, you're going to need to know how to shoot. Okay? Now, you, you need to know how to properly aim a gun. Okay? So that's number one. Let's just get that out the way. You're going to have to learn how to aim and shoot okay now when you shoot you want to make sure you hit the target all right so go and get yourself some lessons all right while you at the same time make sure you call 911 immediately and make sure you're registered in life and security <laughs> and that face though <laughs> She looking like Pennywise up in that motherfucker. <laughs> oh, my God. She looked just like Pennywise up in that bitch, man. But, yeah, yeah, for real, for real, you know. Make sure you, when you use the weapon, make sure you call 911 and let them know when they get there that, you know, you was the one that shot the intruder and uh, here's the weapon. Because they're going to come at you with a whole bunch of questions. So, yeah, just know that when you use your weapon and you call 911, just inspect a lot of questions that's going to come out of it. Because they're going to do their investigation real thoroughly. And make sure you're registered and licensed to carry. <laughs> what you also need to get is a concealed carry 
license, okay? Your CCWs, okay? But what you also got to know is you got to know the laws of different states. Yes, yes. She's about to say it. Make sure you get your CCW, you know, make sure you get that. But you got to also understand and know the laws of the different states. OK, now, of course, this may be her truck. A lot of trucking companies don't allow you to carry your weapon in a truck. And hold on for a minute. Wait, hold on for a minute. Let's just admire that sleeper all plushed out, all nice, all grayed up. I like that. I like that. that. This has to be it. If she's not a company driver, then this got to be her truck. Sister girl, I got to give it to you because that sleeper back there is plush hella nice. All right. I just wanted to come in and say that. Safety tip for women drivers. If you're on your sleeper and you hear somebody trying to break in. And here's another thing, too. Okay. Before we get up out of here. Nice video. Nice tutorial, okay? But if you have a gun on your truck, don't show it on social media. Don't let everybody know that you have a gun on your truck, all right? The only person that needs to know that you have a gun on your truck is the person that's coming to do you harm. That's the only person that needs to know that you have a gun on your truck. Not social media, not everybody in the world. They don't need to know that you have a revolver in 2021. I'm just saying. <laughs> but we social media do not need to know what you have in your truck. All right? All right. Safety tip for women drivers. If you're on your sleeper, and you hear somebody trying to break in, all you got to do is get up slowly and real quiet. Open your drawer, aim, and shoot them motherfuckers. Make sure you call 911 immediately, and make sure you're registered and licensed to carry. 